Welcome to the Socket Podcast, everyone. Today, I have a good friend with me, Lisa Murtaganji. Many of you around the Naperville area know her as the person that takes charge of so many parts of volunteering in our community, running local events. She's the MC. Sometimes she's singing, sometimes she's dancing. Uh, she seems to kind of do it all. So she and I connected uh, a few weeks ago and I thought she'd be a great person to bring on the Socket Podcast to chat about giving back to our community, philanthropy and all the things that she and I both love to do. So welcome, Lisa. Thank you, Dr. Kathy. It's really fun to be here. I appreciate it. Yeah. So Lisa and I met, oh, was it 2010? Nine. Nine. You know, so when Naperville Moms Network first started um, by Kelly Thompson, uh, it's now the branch because I rebranded it about two years ago as we branched out into other communities. She and I met at a networking luncheon that we were hosting and quickly connected and then found our lives running very parallel lines as far as being a part of the chamber and on different committees and helping run different galas and helping run different charity events. Um, we've always had our toes in a little different um, pools, I think, but at the end of the day, we'd always meet up at least a couple times a, a year, somehow in a gown uh, saying hello. So Lisa, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and if you have kids and about your business? Sure. Well, um, basically, I've been a Naperville resident for 14 years now. Is that right, Matt? Yeah, 14 <laughs> years. Wow, that's that's pretty much half a lifetime. Yeah. Um, I like to say I'm a lover of good people and good life. I'm an optimist, a philanthropist, and a woman of action. Love um, it. Yeah, I've um, I run my own business called L Services, and I'm primarily focusing on PR and media. But I also do some spokes modeling and voiceover every now and then a little singing and dancing like Kathy said. <laughs> but, um, but um, yeah, I have two children who are in their teens. So of course, my um, focus is now on college um, decisions and college uh, living kind of situations. And uh, yeah, that's, uh, it's really, I'm a devoted mom. I'm divorced and um, devoted mother. And I love the business community here, but I also love the robust philanthropic community here. Well, and we are so fortunate in Naperville to have such a dynamic community. You know, every once in a while, Naperville gets tagged for being a little uppity, a little snooty. And I'm like, man, if you set foot for one day into one of these meetings with 15 people, um, that really are focused on giving back and, and focused on raising money for amazing organizations that do so much good. If, if, you just, if you just went to a couple of those meetings, you would realize how many people have such hearts of gold and hearts of service. And I, I know that to be true for you. Um, how did you catch the bug of volunteering, of philanthropy? Like, how did you, how did you start into that world? Let's see. Um, I think probably my first go with really being involved in, in philanthropy was college. I was, yeah. in a, I was in a sorority, Alpha Chi Omega, and one of the big tenets of that sorority was to just take care of your community in various ways. So I started doing things like Habitat for Humanity and all, you know, a um, little bit at a time. Because of course, uh, as a 19 year old, your focus is very much inward. You know, you're living in this bubble of what's my class schedule and who's having a party. <laughs> so, um, but got a little bit of a taste in college. And then after college, I got married and started having kids. And when I first, when I had my son, um, I joined a women's club in Geneva, Illinois. It was just Geneva Women's Club. And just started doing a little bit of event planning, helping, and, you know, just fundraising here and there. It was kind of really light, lighthearted. Then once I uh, got divorced, so I had been through a pretty rough marriage. I don't know how much you want to get into it, but um, I'm, I'm a survivor of physical and emotional abuse. And um, after my divorce was well underway, I mean, you know, things were actually better once we started the process. Uh, it occurred to me that 
I had a support system that so many women just mm. can't even dream about. And so I, once everything was done and I moved my kids here to Naperville, after I got myself settled, I realized, you know, it's one thing to say, I care about my community. And then it's a whole nother thing to really put those words into action. And at the time, I wasn't really sure what I had to offer. I mean, you know, I, I wasn't about to start writing checks. I mean, I had two toddlers and a whole lot of to-do list items. So <laughs> I basically started, I, back then there was an actual yellow pages, you know, the big paper, right. yellow pages. I just opened it up to, I think it was probably just under either charitable organizations or something like that. I just went down the list and made some phone calls and I said, hi, I'm new to town. I have a six-year-old and a three-year-old. I, we all have a pair of hands. So if you need bodies to move boxes or put out signs or whatever, we would love to help. And so I got to know, oh my gosh, so many charitable organizations around Naperville just by showing up an hour a month here and there yeah. with my two kids. And I fell in love. And I, you know, it's really grown from there. I don't have to tell you. I mean, you and I actually were part of a um, fundraiser together called Kids Matter Ignite the Night a few years ago. Yep, yep. It's they one of those things where sometimes the, the, I'm sorry, sometimes the I, mission of the organizations really connect with you and you just want to keep going. I know. You know, it's so interesting because when I have new chiropractors that I see through the Chamber of Commerce, right, which is one of, one of the organizations that I know we're both connected to, um, and they ask me for advice for how did I get so deeply rooted into the Naperville community, I was like, show up and throw your hand up and say, what can I do? How can I help? There are so many organizations and committees and groups within not only the chamber, but the JCs and, and how many, I mean, how many not-for-profits are there in April? 250 or something? There Easily. is yeah. something for everyone. There's something for, you know, animal shelters. There's ones for, you know, helping moms. There's ones for homelessness. There's ones for people that have gone through abusive relationships, trying to get out of those relationships. So you can find almost anything that's near and dear veterans I know you work with um, organizations that help veterans as well so you find a couple of things that you're really interested in and although there's no yellow book to crack open the internet's pretty good place to start you know Naperville charities and then put what you love and you're gonna find a couple of things that come up and you're right you send an email you make a phone call and say hey I've got, I've got two hands. I've got, you know, I've got time. Um, my, my, through my kind of career, it shifted between sometimes I've had more time and sometimes I've said, I can sponsor an event now, right? I can, um, the Naperville uh, Women Junior, the way Naperville, how am I saying that? Naperville Junior Naperville Women's Junior Club. Women's Club. <laughs> <laughs> I always kind of reverse those things. They're doing a Mother's Day event. So I'm doing a sponsorship for the practice, a sponsorship for the branch. Um, it's not an obnoxious amount of money, but I'm um, like, let's, you know, let's just help support as, as everyone's kind of getting back outside and, and uh, enjoying, enjoying some events again in small, small bits at this point. But I just think it's so important to be a part of that community. And I couldn't agree more that you get more out of it that you're ever going to put into it. Um, the, the people that I count on my, I, I can't even count them on my fingers and my toes of people I could call at any time and say, I'm, I'm struggling or I need help. And 18 out of those 20 of my fingers and toes, I met through the community. I met through community service. So I think you're hitting the, the nail on the head that it's a, it's a win-win. I agree. And you know, it, what you can give can change at any given time. And that's great. Sometimes you have a little money that you can contribute. Sometimes you have time to contribute. Sometimes you have ideas and you can brainstorm, yeah. you know, and you know, honestly, it's not lost on the little humans. I, I say all the time how glad I am. I mean, in a weird roundabout way that I was in the situation that I found myself in being a single mom in a new town where I didn't know anyone because it, kind of forced me to be creative and think, what can we do? My kids and I, uh, I don't remember what year it was, but not long after we moved here, maybe 2009, 
grabbed some shovels, went to McDowell, McDonald Farm over by, um, by Knocknell's area and okay. planted trees for the farm. We yeah. did like 30 trees that day just because they asked us to. We said, we're, you know, we've got, we're able-bodied. We can help. So it doesn't have to be a big mon monumental task or expensive or draining. It can literally be a fun afternoon where you spend an hour, you spend five hours, whatever, whatever you can do. And it doesn't matter if you're four or 40 or 84, you know, just yeah. look here and there. And boy, the, yeah, the gratitude of the organizations is a wonderful thing. But also, there are people on the other, other end of that. Sometimes we see them and sometimes we don't. But there are people on the other end of that whose lives you're making so much better by tiny little efforts. It's fantastic. Yeah. You know, I was on the JC's board for a while and we, we um, that's an, or if you, you don't live in the area, it's an organization that um, does a lot of fundraising and does a big event in Naperville and then cuts checks to different organizations. But on the board, you actually have to go through all those donation requests and determine where are we spending our thousands of dollars. And, oh, good God, I literally like sobbed through my, sharing about it was for loaves and fishes which is a community pantry and about a time in my life where i literally had no money that you know a law change had happened in chiropractic i was going through a divorce i was losing my home i was filing a bankruptcy and i got so emotional because i was like i personally had the support of my family I personally knew I wasn't going to go hungry. My two little boys who were three and a half and four and a half were not going to go hungry. But if I didn't have that, and a lot of people don't, I don't know what I would have done. I wouldn't have had money to get an apartment. I wouldn't have had money for food. I, I mean, and, and I just, I started talking and I'm like ugly crying. And so I'm just so passionate about the fact that many of us are very, very fortunate to never have been in a situation where we truly need that level of help. But many people have been pretty close or many people have. And if they can receive that help and especially some of the organizations, they do it in such an amazing way. And I look at Loaves and Fishes in particular, like they're, they're, they're shopping. You're, it looked like you're going to a store, right? And they really take the time and effort to make sure that people feel good about being there and know that this is, you know, we are here to help you. You shouldn't feel shame. You shouldn't feel embarrassed. Everyone gets themselves into situations like this at times. So um, you really, you hit the nail on the head there. It, that, that's sort of a big goal of a lot of these organizations is to not seem like here's a handout. It's more like we're going to help restore your dignity and your your pride so that you yeah. can get back on your feet or go in the direction you need to go. It's it's not like it's it's not like a oh you have needs we'll have to fill them. No no no. It's a yeah. people come together because of the love of sure. I mean you know, from a selfish perspective, it's fun to do put on last playing or to do some of these events, you know, you, you get a lot out of it personally, but also it's for these organizations to do their job in a way that doesn't just, you know, temporarily ease the pain. It's really more of a rebuilding people's lives when yeah. there's, you know, some, like you said, a lot of people don't have the resources or the support systems. And, um, yeah, I mean, it can be super simple too. Like, I feel like even supporting sports team, you know, the local sports teams that do fundraisers or a school PTA, you know, yeah. all those kinds of things are just little incremental things <laughs> where everyone can dip in a little bit as they can. And it's yep. tons of fun along the way. Uh, you know, yes, there's the end result of feeling pride and, you know, all that, but it's it's really about, bringing everyone together in order that everyone, including those who are receiving the services, can feel that same sense of balance and security. Yeah, that's the truth. So you have been a part of so many events, way more than I have. So do you have a couple highlights, like thing, like events that are just near and dear to your heart that you think are, are done really well or any anything pop out in your head? Okay, well, First of all, I think I need to point out the fact that I am clearly 
the worst person on the planet at saying no. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't know how. I have podcasts for that, Lisa. <laughs> I've done podcasts, setting boundaries and saying no. I will send it oh, to yeah. you after this. <laughs> I, I probably need it like tattooed on my wrist or something. I can't <laughs> <Just> say no. <laughs> <laughs> but um, like I said, I have worked with so many organizations. And yes, some of them have a mission that just oh, guts me, you know, in a good way. Like, wow, that's, it's kind of a shadow of me in a way, right? So yeah. Family Shelter Service is a, um, <clears throat> pardon me, woman's organization. Well, it's a um, housing and rehabilitation, you know, uh, or rebuilding life um, center for mostly women who have been through abusive situations. Um, they do a gala every spring, which is absolutely tremendous. And um, I, I don't know how to say it, but every, I feel like every tiny little thing that that organization does is monumental. It's just yeah. amazing the people they help and um, really empower. But some of my favorite events, I mean, you know, I absolutely adore the community career centers. They're now a career networking center, dancing yep. with celebrities. Um, I was asked to be a contestant in the 2014 um, edition, which brought home that trophy. Woo, woo. You were awesome. <laughs> thank you. You were awesome. And, um, thank you. And then the, I think the biggest compliment in the world is after I participate in a, a nonprofit's fundraiser, they they ask me afterward, do you think you would be willing to MC our next one? <laughs> it's like, what, me? <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing. It's such a compliment. It's heartwarming. So, and it's, that event is so different and so much fun. So yes, that's a standout for me. The Kentucky Derby Gala for Hesed House, which I also MC every year, is an absolute, oh, it's a, it's a, um, spectacle. It's huge. It's decorated. It's, we have a horse on site, you know, it's all kinds of stuff, but this one is for truly, um, uh, funding a, um, a shelter. It's a homeless shelter, but also with all the associated programs. And that's one of the things yeah. I wanted to make sure to mention is so many of these nonprofits do a absolutely fab fabulous job of interweaving their services with other service providers in the area. So like Someone who's homeless isn't just homeless and then boop, they're they're out of homelessness. No, yeah. they also need help with writing their resume and learning how to interview or you know, food insecurity or any, you know, any of these, sometimes substance abuse, sometimes they you know, it's all yeah. kinds of things. And some of these, um, you had mentioned lo loaves and fishes. Uh, loaves and fishes is now part of CARES. So yep. loaves and fishes cares community services is. 360 youth services and little friends and I mean all so much but some of the my favorite events are the two I mentioned but also I'm part of the Naperville JCs that you mentioned and last fling is a huge undertaking but so much fun what a great team yeah hopefully we'll have that this year we're planning I it. so I know like fingers crossed yeah I, fingers I'm crossed. also a huge fan of the dancing with the celebrities one I yeah. just think um I mean Kim White does such a great job and you and Danielle have been hosting the last couple of years and I it's literally the most nervous I've ever been to be a contestant on there I just it is it is nerve I mean I can get up in front of people I sometimes I have some nerves sometimes I don't but that one, whoo, I was, I think, fifth. There's eight dancers, so I was fifth. And what I didn't know was that there was a 10 to 15 minute intermission between dancer four and dancer five. So dancer four gets done and Nick, my partner looks at me, he's like, are you ready? And my adrenaline's out, I'm like, come on, let's do this. And then someone gets up and says, all right, everyone, hasn't this been fantastic? Now we're taking a 15 minute break. I'm like, what? <laughs> No, I just need to do this, right? Because once I was out there, you, yeah, course. you're geared up and you're like, let's get it done. Yeah, yeah. And it was Sorry. it was actually <laughs> the day that I went on the my first date with Jason. So oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, we had met online that Saturday and we were trying to figure out between jobs and school and kids and like when we could get together. So he asked me out for that Wednesday night. And I thought. I probably shouldn't hit him with, well, I'm dancing in a celebrity 
charity event. <laughs> I'll wean him into Kathy Suber, right? We're not going to hit him with all that I do right now. He might get scared <laughs> off. So I said, I'm going to a charity event. It wasn't a lie, right? I'm okay if something, if I say something, I'm all right. It's not technically a lie. I'm going to a charity event. Yeah. Um, so we went to um, uh, sushi for sushi at Kiku for lunch. So, and then I told him that, I'm like, I'm kind of dancing in this thing tonight. So, love and, it. Uh, but anyway, that's off topic. So that okay, that, total non sequitur. You, I love that you just said I, I need to ease him into the pool of Kathy Summer. I love it. It's like a zero depth pool where you're like a little yeah, <laughs> not diving into all the Kathy Summer. Oh my God, so good. That's so good. Yeah, it's uh, you know, for someone that's not been, he's been in corporate sales all of his life, right? While that involves trade shows and you know he can speak in front of a room of thousands, right? He he has talents um all over the place but when and i know you know this right if we go downtown naperville you run into 10 people you know so sometimes we're totally up for that he's like you want to go to hugo's i'm like you okay with running into a bunch of people and he's like yeah and sometimes we're like let's go to yorkville you know <laughs> let's go 20 minutes in a different direction because one of the side effects whether it's you know it can be very positive but when you're this entrenched in the community, it is hard to go places without seeing a lot of people. So it's hard to have a private conversation sometimes. Yeah, that's but. true. That's true. But it is one of the wonderful things about you, Kathy, personally, is that you are so emotive and ebullient and dynamic that really, there, even if you weren't a celebrity dancer and you weren't a sponsor of this or that, somehow you're the magnet that just draws people in. So oh, that about you, so he would sweet. figure out pretty quick, no matter what. <laughs> well, thank you. I appreciate it. I'm going to have to look up a couple of those words that you use. So if you could text them to me, that'd be great. Uh, <laughs> I don't think I know those words, but they sound really nice. <laughs> it's, they're compliments. <laughs> I, I, I figured. <laughs> but awesome. thank you. I, I appreciate that. So yeah. I remember asking you at one point, this is probably a year or two ago, do you get nervous? And I was expecting you to say yes, because I get nervous. I assumed everyone gets a little nervous. And you were like, not really. And you were like singing, that might've been at the Ignite the night where you were singing some big songs, like greatest showman songs, right? You can't mess around with that. That's, you're all in if you're gonna sing songs from the greatest showman. So how did you always feel like walking on a stage was super comfortable for you? Or is it something that you used to be nervous and you've just done it so many times and you realize you didn't die, so it probably would be okay the next time? How did you work your way up into feeling confident enough or like how did you settle the nerves to run some of these events? Okay, <clears throat> if I'm being totally honest, <laughs> I will tell you that my first time on stage was when I was three. Oh and my goodness. Yeah, um, I started taking dance lessons at age three with, that ended in a recital. Now, this wasn't a solo thing. I was in a group of little three-year-olds. So you can you can imagine these tiny little people with stubby little legs and their little tutus. But um, yeah, so I did that every year through high school and, and picked up some things along the way. And yes, you do get used to it. I mean, you know, I was captain of my drill team and high school and I was the group leader for my church group, my youth group growing up. And it just, I think you, um, yes, you do get used to it, but I, I always, and I say this every year to the Dancing with the Celebrities contestants, I know I am showing up in front of a room full of supporters. Yeah. And these people, yes, they want me to do well, but it doesn't matter. They don't care. They know this is, this isn't my job. This isn't my right. job to sing, you know, the greatest showman songs for Ignite the Night. It's my my philanthropy. It's my hobby. It's my just I'm giving a little something different, a little um, I don't know if I can call it entertainment, but <laughs> so <laughs> I could call it entertainment. Yes. Yeah, I think I I think I just don't get nervous because I know everyone there, no matter how I perform or how technically accurate I am, it's I'm giving something to improve or contribute to in some way, the entertainment value of the event, which hopefully will result in something good for the for the organization, yeah. not for me. I'm never gonna try to you know, sing a song perfectly, except maybe the national anthem, 
in front of a bunch of veterans. That's a scary one to do. <laughs> <laughs> like singing the national anthem at the 9-11 ceremony, that's oh, scary. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I bet. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess I just don't get nervous because I know logically I'm not being judged on my the quality of what I'm delivering there. Except in one case, I made a huge blunder, which I'll never let myself off the hook for. <laughs> it was Dancing with the Celebrities. I forgot what year, but kind of recent, 2017 maybe. I was MC with Danielle Tafano of 95.9 The River. And she and I, were, we've done a ton of events together. I love our partnership. We're sort of, um, I'm sort of the more journalistic kind of um, presenter. And she's more of the, you know, Q&A on the go kind of presenter. Yep. And so I had done all this research to ask certain questions of the contestants. And Dave Miller of Chef by Request was one of the dancers that year. And I introduced him as Dave Miller. And I said a different company name, which I won't say. <laughs> and I... <laughs> I didn't even realize my mistake. He got up and danced and did a beautiful job. And as soon as I went over to her, toward side stage, Danielle was like, all right, Lise, now you screwed up. Now you did it. Oh, no. I mean, what a kind of a blow, right? <laughs> and it's not like I didn't know. Di I, know, I, know. <laughs> I had seen his wife and their kids at Walgreens shopping and I mean, <laughs> What was I doing? I don't know. It was such a big boo-boo. And I always felt bad about it. I apologized and corrected my error after he danced. And as I was interviewing him, I kept saying, so Dave Miller of Chef by Request, what did you think of the <laughs> blah, blah, just over and over. Dave We're going to get you 17 extra plugs right? due to my one mistake, right? I, I mean... I I was at the um, NCTV 17 taping a business connection for the Chamber of Commerce and the CEO at the time introduced me and then said the name of a competitor that has a really similar name. So very similar, right? And you think, you know what? We have so much going on in our heads. There are a lot of companies that have somewhat similar names, right? And and so it's it's so, and I just said, actually, actually advanced health of Naperville. And he was like, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. I'm like, don't worry about it. There's a lot of us out there, you know? Um, so I'm sure that Dave went with the flow and appreciated the, you know, the 17 extra shout outs. So. Exactly. Yeah, I'm, I, hopefully I made up for it. I'm sorry, Dave Miller of Chef Fry Request. <laughs> Oh my gosh, that is that is just that's too funny. Luckily, well, so far, I've never you know fallen down coming up the stairs or something like that. So yeah, well, know, that's something no physical injuries. I am sure at some point I will do that, but I don't wear really heels anymore. I don't mm -hmm. know my body; I just can't do it anymore. The most nervous I ever got wasn't necessarily a charitable organization, but there's um uh, the People Tree downtown Naperville. I don't know. Have you ever been to it? Oh yes. Oh that's yes. Awesome. Yep. So they the the people that run it had been had reached out to me from the beginning before it was even the people tree can you come and talk can you come and talk and you know for that you have to write a story you have to go and practice it a couple of times in front of their um the people that run it and then on stage there's no notes there's no bullet points there's no note cards there you are just up in front of 250 people sharing mostly a personal story and it's you know, seven, seven, eight, nine minutes, something like that. If you gave me a microphone and put me up and I had one minute notice and you put me up on stage and said, go talk about confidence and being uniquely you. I could talk for an hour and I could just shoot the shit, right? I could just, I could just be me and talk about the lessons learned. And as long as I wasn't following a script, I don't really have that many nerves about something like that. But this this really made me nervous. And so I get up there and I get a couple of sentences in and my mind just goes blank. No. I mean, I mean, I'm just standing there. And I'm like, I could I couldn't see my papers. I couldn't think about where I was, you know, like as far as like in my talk. And finally I just leaned into the microphone. I go, this is harder than it looks. And everyone's clapping, Can I go Kathy, yeah. go Kathy. And I, in that moment, I took my time. I took a couple of breaths, I found my space. And there was probably two other times I truly like fumbled my words or stopped and couldn't remember. And 
and it was it was it was a little embarrassing, you know, because I it was such a, a a story that was so dear to me, and I think it had really good points. By the end, I caught my groove, and I mentioned it to one of my friends who was there. Maybe four months later, I'm like, man, I still feel a little embarrassed about how I screwed up. And she goes, you screwed up. She literally, she's like, Kathy, that's not what I remember from that. You know, now maybe she was lying to me. Thank you, Grace. I appreciate that. I appreciate your lie. But, uh, but at the end of the day, if you have a story to tell, you have something to give to local organizations, your heart and soul is going to be what they remember, not necessarily the, the little flubs that you end up having. Absolutely true. You being a little vulnerable in that moment and kind of catching yourself, it, I mean, it reminds everyone of our humanity, right? Which made your personal story so much more impactful. And yeah. people, people carry that with them. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I think that's, I think it's a good thing to focus on, you know, I'm doing something to try to share love and joy and positive energy and giving back and, and all of those things. And if, if you can take that focus off yourself, I, I'm, I'm, I'm sure it helps everyone a little bit with those nerves, but I don't know, getting up on a stage and, and talking to a lot of people, it still ranks up there with, with the things that make me, me a little nervous. <laughs> okay. Well, I, I've never noticed it in you. You've no. always, you're a, you're a beautiful presence, whether on stage or in front of a microphone or behind a podcast, uh, you, you just are so relatable and you, you're inspiring. So it's, no. if I were you just let all that stuff go, take those <laughs> out of your backpack. No one's all judging right. on like the quality of the delivery or the quality of the, mm -mm. It's, all right. It's the motivation right. and inspiration we get from you. I like that. I lesson learned, Lisa. Thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> So what's next as we kind of slowly come through, you know, everything being shut down and no events? Um, do you have do you have yeah. things on the on the horizon? So I do. Yeah, uh, I mentioned that I'm a member of the Naperville JCs. Well, I'm a rooster, but um, <laughs> member of the Naperville JCs, and planning is underway for the 2021 last fling, which always takes place during um, Labor Day weekend. I'm also a member of the Naperville Exchange Club, which plans Rib Fest, which this yep. year will be taking place during 4th of July weekend in Romeoville. And then on top of that, I'm on the planning committee for the Naperville Salute, which will be the festival uh, during the 4th of July weekend that will stay in downtown Naperville. So okay. near, yeah, near Rotary Hill and the Carillon and um, fireworks at Frontier Park. So all of those things, those are large scale events that I'm helping to plan and sort of hopefully those things will come together so that the public can come together and enjoy family friendly fun, uh, outdoors, you know, music and, you know, community, that kind of thing. But yep. also all of those organizations do, do some very beneficial things for um, charitable organizations all over Naperville and Absolutely. the surrounding area. So, um, Everybody who attends any of those or all of those is making a difference already. So people don't have to think, oh gosh, I'm not going to any galas. I'm not making a difference. It's just not true. If you attend something, you're already making a difference. You are. Yes, you are. Well, Lisa, thank you so much for coming on. This was such a great conversation. It's always, always nice to connect with you and, and, and share and, and just, it's always a good conversation. So I appreciate Thank you, you, Dr. Kathy. I appreciate you too. I love that we've known each other for over a decade. Yep. I, love, I love your podcast. I, I've listened to every episode at least once, sometimes when I'm exercising and sometimes when I'm just calm, breathing, trying to take it all in. But boy, is it an honor to be with you in this capacity because you have had some absolute powerhouses on your show, on your podcast. So to be among them is a huge compliment. I appreciate oh. Well, you're right there with them. I, I I love it. And that is the truth. I look at the people that have come on and the wisdom that's been shared. And um, I'm, I'm very honored. It's, it's been so incredible to create this. And, you know, people say, how's socket going? I'm like, well, good. I think, I mean, you know, I just figure I show up, I just keep putting out this type of information and, and this knowledge and the lessons I've learned through my life. And that's really where my heart is right now. So uh, it's been an exciting journey. And again, like today, this isn't work to me. This is just hanging out, chatting with a friend. 
That's great. I love it. The only thing that could make this any better is if you were here with me, I'd give you a big hug. I know. All right, we're hugging. <laughs> <laughs> but it's gorgeous outside. So get out of that office. Go I will. Sunshine, breathe some fresh air. Have a great rest of your day. Thank you so much. I will. If people would like to get a hold of you, how can they, uh, how can they reach you? Well, uh, my website is lservices.com, which is E-L-L-E services.com. I, like I said, I do PR and media. So if people want to get there, um, nonprofit or slash event uh, into the news so that you can reach more people. That's the best way to get a hold of me. All my contact information is there. All right, great. Well, have a great day. Enjoy the sunshine. And I'm sure that you and I will connect soon. Thank you, Kathy. Right. Thanks, everyone. And, and thank you, everyone, for tuning into the Socket Podcast. We'll be back soon. <laughs>